Welcome, everybody out there listening on KFWB News Talk 980, our flagship station in Los Angeles, or Extreme Talk, XM Channel 165, or on the World Wide Web at cleanradio.com. I'm having problems with my S's tonight. And um, in the studio with me, Jennifer, easy on the eyes, Jimenez. Hello. Thanks for having me. I haven't been on in a couple weeks. Yeah, you've, uh, you know, you've been busy. Mm-hmm. I have been busy. Not making money. Uh, I'm joking. Making money. <laughs> Appearing, please. I'm joking. Wait, but. that's horrible. Yeah. You know, you always start off with bashing me. It, it's like, no, I don't. I have no, nothing but love, Joe. I know, I yes. know. It's kind of like that little. I always say this. I've said it actually once or twice before. It's kind of like that little boy at school that has a crush on a girl and he's mean to her. You're like that, but we're kind of like brother and sister because you have a girlfriend who mm. I absolutely love and I know you love. Mm. Um, but what, it's, whatever helps you sleep at night. Yeah, um, it's right. Anyways, so happy up. Thanksgiving, everybody out yes. there. Happy holidays. Happy, you know, it's uh, pretty amazing. It is amazing. Can you yeah. believe fifty nine point one billion dollars Black Friday made this weekend? I just saw on the news, which is so insane. I was not anywhere near the malls. I actually I went out to Burbank last night to go to the movies, which is a really bad idea. <laughs> To go on a Saturday night at Thanksgiving and not pre-order tickets, uh-huh. and uh, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> I am never going to the movies on Thanksgiving again. But you know, I want to tell you something interesting, and I say this all the time. Um, I love uh, me? you know when I, <laughs> when I was drinking, when I was using, I didn't do these things, Mm-mm. and and I these are like amazing experiences. Even if I can't couldn't get into the movie theater, the fact that I'm actually trying to go to one. You know, 14 years later to me, it's still an amazing experience. It's it, living life. Uh, it's so true. I love that you're saying that. You know, I had my family at um, at my house, and uh, they're still there. And my brother lives only a mile away from me, but he decided to stay the night this weekend. And my mom's there, and, like, there's every I can hear everyone snoring, my little dog snoring. And, and I was so happy because seven years ago, in the last seven years, I haven't done this on my own, like living alone, having my family there, even if it's, you know, a little bit annoying or getting kicked out of my own kitchen like it's such a dream and it's i think it's like i get to create this yes which is so beautiful no i mean i think it's very it it, it, first of all let's welcome everybody out there listening tonight on the web or you know let's welcome live streaming everywhere and uh, like i said again happy holidays and this is like one of the hardest times i know for people that are newly sober for people that are sober, the holidays are rough, and um, people who aren't even in addiction yeah. or have any problems with it, yeah. it's a there's more suicide and there's more relapses as well. Very for uplifting. those who are sober, <laughs> I know, but you know it's, it's it is true. a weird time. And one of the things I want to say is, you know, when I first got sober, I mean, I got sober when I was 22. Our guest tonight got sober when he was 20 or 21. And one of the hard things when I got sober was I didn't have any really sober memory. I didn't have any holiday sober memories or really fun memories of Mm -hmm. holidays. And, I mean, for five years of my life, essentially, I spent every holiday in a rehab. (laughs) I don't know how that happened, but every holiday was in... Was in, you know, every birthday and holiday I was spent in different rehabs across America and a different country. And I, I, I had to really start building sober memories of mm-hmm. holidays. Mm-hmm. And, you know, 14 years later, I have some amazing memories. I don't even think about anymore the past. I don't think about how, you know, the family stuff or any of that stuff because I'm sober. I have great memories. Yeah. I, you know, I am in a place where in the last year and a half I've been rediscovering me on another level. And I think because I have less time than you do I I feel like I have big girl girl panties on as I call it you know and creating these new memories makes me realize that I'm doing the right thing you know and and that I'm living my dream whether it be big or small it's like those moments in between that make it all the worth it yeah you know no I mean and I want to hear from people out there that are listening tonight I want to hear you know from whatever you're struggling you're you had a great holiday call us in tell us about it and I want to hear about your memories I want to hear about them past and present because I think one of the things you know I'm gonna introduce the guest in a second he's a great-looking kid oh god beautiful and um just stunning he's, I'm like a cougar <laughs> yeah. with him it's kind of weird he's a ravishing young I feel man like grandma around and him. Uh, from my neck of the woods <laughs> sort of and um, you know, when you're from New York, you're proud, you know, like know. across the bridge doesn't count, except if it's like, a, you know, <laughs> I don't know. But um, one of the things that I've encountered that you've encountered that he's going to encounter is that people look at us when we're sober a while and say, you weren't an addict. How could you have been an addict? Mm-hmm. Because we, 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 we get dressed up very well. And um, before, you know, let's just, you know, the number here is 888-539-2980. That's 888-539-2980. 
Give us a call wherever you're Talk, at. Ask us anything. Yeah, ask us anything. And uh, if I want anything. Yeah, anything. And let's welcome, <laughs> he was on rehab this year mm-hmm. with, with Dr. Drew and Jennifer e- Easy on the Eyes Jimenez. And uh, it really should be your show because you're the star. <laughs> Thank you. And Thank uh, you. let's welcome uh, Michael Mariano. <laughs> yes. Did Mikey. I pronounce it correctly? You did. You did. You got to get closer to the me. mic, Michael. Still good. Yeah. yeah. Pick it up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Hi, Mikey. Yeah, it's all good. Welcome to Clean Radio, Mikey. Thank you for having me. Is it okay if I call you Mikey? It is okay. I'm actually really happy you came tonight with a Yankee hat on. You're representing. Yeah, I told Jen that you would like that. Okay, I wait, do. Can, I, I'm I afraid it. to say this because his mom might be listening, yeah. but I'm sorry, mom, in advance. He took the train to get over here, yeah. and like he, oh, I was God. like, oh my God, that's such a like a big thing anyways. And then the Christmas parade is yeah. going on, and he I, he was like, I can you come up above? And I was like, dude, I can't get there. If you can't cross, I can't get there. I'm like, make it happen, right? And I didn't realize that he was going to like cross. Crossed mm-hmm. into the parade down the street and walk over, and I was like, "I'm taking you home after." But like, you went to any lengths to get here. And, and so Mikey's yeah. mom you. understands this. Our transit system is not like it is back oh, east. Absolutely not. We no have way. a train that runs like every four hours <laughs> right, right, <laughs> and right. doesn't go to streets. Mm-hmm. It like sort of goes to five different streets. I had to tell my mom this too when I moved out here. She's like, "Why don't you take the bus?" I'm like, "You you really don't understand this. <laughs> no. The bus not doesn't." Happening. But I, I, I really love that you took the bus. I'm really happy you came down here tonight. Mm-hmm. And I know you're going through some rough times when we'll talk about it if you want to in a second. Sure, I would love to. But one of the things that really amazes me is the willingness that you got on the train. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool that you just got out of rehab, no pun, you know, with yeah, the show yeah. and real rehab. And you went to a sober living. And those are the things that are just amazing because you're, you're doing the deal. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I don't know what happened to the rest of the cast of Rehab. I hope they're doing great, but you're you've, you're sticking it out. Yeah, for sure. And it's it was a great experience, but like, I realized that I kind of can't run my own show anymore. You know right. what I mean? Like, sober living was suggested to me. I'm gonna do it. You know what I mean? Jen asked me to come on here. I'm gonna do it. You know what I mean? And it kind of like, it gives me an extra push to keep going the next day. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, the willingness it kind of comes comes easy to me. You know what I mean? I, I, you're, you're a few months sober and like mm-hmm. yesterday you got the worst news possible and like you were going to get on a plane uh-huh. and the fact that you showed up today and like you, you know, I was like, don't worry about doing this. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, you know what, Jen, I'm not getting on a plane till Monday. I got to do this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to show up for you. I don't want to let you down. Uh-huh. And I just felt like I get the chills. Like I went through something really horrible. I, I lost my dad when I was four months sober years ago, like uh, over 10 years ago at the time I was sober and I didn't stay sober, you mm-hmm. know, through after that I mean he saw me sober but you know you stayed so you're sober and you're showing up like I didn't show up for anyone then Mm -hmm. you know I I could barely show up for myself and it's just amazing that you're here tonight yeah and I mean I texted you earlier that day and I was like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it like I didn't think I was gonna be able to pull myself together you know what I mean but then I kind of when I found out I was gonna be going home on Monday and not yesterday or today I was just like, it's not about me. You know what I mean? I have to do this for John. You know what I mean? And I have to just do what I said I was going to do. Do you want to say what happened? um, Yeah, of course. You know, um, pay my respects to him. My brother has a really great friend. Your younger um, brother. My younger brother. Yeah, he's 18. um, And he passed away one day after Thanksgiving of a heroin overdose. 18-year-old boy, the whole world in front of him. You know what I mean? He was essentially my brother, too, because he was always over the house. You know what I mean? Just like a close-knit family friend. And this news, it's just it's just the worst thing in the world. You know what I mean? And what kind of gets me the most is that this doesn't need to happen. It never needs to happen. You know what I mean? Like there's a solution out there and it's for everyone and it's free. And like if I can do this and get clean and sober, I know that anyone can. But he just he never got to the rooms. You know, he never had the opportunity. And did he watch the show? Yeah, he he, watched the show. And he knows your experience. Yes, yes, yes. He watched the show. He talked to me for the, the couple months that I was out here. You know what I mean? And I was just looking through inbox messages today and I was... I was saying, you know, his name is John. And I was like, John, like, you can do this. Like, there's a solution. Get to the rooms and you can do it. You know what I mean? If you're willing to put the work in and like reading those today, I said, I don't I don't want this thing to take you out before you have a chance to live your life. You know what I mean? Right. And that's part of the problem with drugs. Like, I mean, it's part of the problems with any drugs, but with heroin, it's one time and you mm-hmm. can be done. Right. And right. Um, sadly, and you were telling me about 15 of your friends have died mm-hmm. this year. So many. It's just it's just this epidemic that's going on at home and no one sees to be like seeing it for what it is. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sick and tired of burying my friends. You right. know what I mean? So, I mean, I kind of am taking this opportunity to kind of just like if I can 
affect one person or one person can hear the message that there's hope and that you can do this. You know what I mean? Like I, that's, that's my, well, there is hope because you're sitting in front of me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I mean, that's horrible. That's just, um, you know, and and the saddest thing is that he wanted it obviously because what kind of masochist would want to rehab Mm -hmm. while getting high? So many, not (laughs) so many, right. So many, but all of those people and what I love about the show that you guys have done and I love about certain shows is that you're helping people out there that mm-hmm. you know this wasn't celebrity rehab this right. was actual rehab this real. was this Nothing was real guys lose. and I've met Eric and mm-hmm. I've met you now and this was real people trying to get it right right and uh, to people out there that are listening to mothers to you know um, there is hope mm-hmm. fathers yeah know. fathers and sisters brothers. sisters brothers and all that stuff um, it's 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 pretty amazing um, if you just tuned in you're listening to clean radio uh, give us a call at 888-539-2980. That's 888-539-2980. So people, so we're in the studio with, uh, obviously, Jennifer Easy on the Eyes, Jimenez, and uh, Michael Mariano. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Yeah, you're pronouncing it correctly. Um, from the show Rehab. But, you know, it didn't, it ended, it, it ended in heroin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How long were you shooting up? About two years. Wow. How much yeah. were you doing? Uh, uh, four grams a day when it kind of. So that's like forty bags. Yeah, it's forty bags. Like in New York and in in uh, on the West Coast, it's a little bit different. The heroin. They call it balloons. Different. Well, I think that's like more around <laughs> it took Boston. A shot. <laughs> no, no, no. Like in, if you know, in New York, it comes in like little wax bags, and they have like stamps on them. And like one gram is ten bags, and that's a bundle. So I was doing about four bundles a day. That's a know? lot. Yeah, it is. I was doing like gram shots. The thing was was like. I wasn't one of the people who like I kind of stayed at the same tolerance. I moved up and up and up. And How up. are you getting money for this? Um, I worked with my parents, and they kind of gave me my money, like so I wouldn't just go out and spend it all at once. You right. know what I mean? Very but, similar to my family. Yeah, yeah. Any way possible. You yeah. know what I mean? Like any addict that's listening knows that they're gonna do whatever they need to do. Like my family doesn't have any gold jewelry anymore. You know what I mean? I've spent some time in jail because of the actions that I took to get drugs. You know what I mean? Wow, it's just it's really honest. And what's amazing and is your truth. mom is listening to the show right now. And I'm I mean, sure she's, you know, mm-hmm. happy. Yeah, but the thing is, like, there's nothing that my mom doesn't know. Right. Like, she went through everything with me. You know what I mean? Like, there's n- not everything she did was right. You know what I mean? But I don't think I would be here without I'm her. G- I'm going to say something very important right now. And the, the biggest thing I learned, and this goes to your mom, and the, this is, there is no right and wrong. No, mm-hmm. there's I, not. It's one of the biggest things I've, I'm not an advocate for tough love. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not an advocate for kicking a 17-year-old kid out of the house because that's just me. Where's he yeah. going to go? He's going to exactly. be worse. And I know we might disagree with each other on this, but teenagers, I'm not a big fan of kicking them out of the house. Yeah, I'm a big fan of as long as you're alive, there's still a chance. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing that you were able to send the video out to Dr. Drew. Mm-hmm. Is that how you got yeah. on the show? Yeah, that was like one of the first. What got you steps. to get that video? How did you even hear about it? It was actually, I was online and I saw like kind of like an ad for it that Dr. Drew was doing like the, a new rehab show without celebrities. So I, went, I sent like a, uh, wrote my story kind of a little bit and then they called me back. And then the next round that I kind of had to make was a Skype interview. And I did it with this woman named Beata and she was just and asking me a bunch of questions you know what i mean and were you nodding out <laughs> no i wasn't i, I got some of them did <laughs> i got i got high before it of course because like you have to get high before you do anything <laughs> but um i wasn't you know it was to the point where i couldn't nod out even if i wanted to i just needed it to kind of feel in my in my body to do anything you know what i mean if yeah. it, i had to go to the store i had to shoot up first it didn't like and then if i wanted to go play basketball like 10 you minutes before I already shot up. Yeah, right. I needed it to function, yeah. but like I just needed it to like do anything in my life. You uh, know what I mean? His mom reminds me a lot of my f- mom. You know, I, I wasn't 20 when I got sober this last time. And um, my mom had me at her house, let me come into her house. And mm-hmm. I would use there. She wouldn't, she caught me, I guess, in a blackout a couple times. I even offered it to her. I feel so bad about it. But I, you know, she didn't want, she said, you know, if, if anything I want, if she's going to die, my daughter's going to die. I want her to die knowing somebody loved her and she wasn't alone. So I, I understand where your mom comes from. And mm-hmm. I feel on that level. I also believe in tough love at least in my recovery tough love came to me because no other kind of talk was coming right but you were also a little bit older at that point a little bit yeah yeah you know (laughs) and and that's not i'm just saying for for a teenager that's willing to put shoot up you know stick a needle in his Mm -hmm. arm to me what's the what's the punishment 
you know, if you're willing to stick a needle in your yeah. arm, like sadly his friend did and died, what's the punishment? Yeah. What are right. you, I, I, mm-hmm. you can't punish somebody Mm-mm. that's willing to kill himself. No. Mm-hmm. And that's just my, that's just one. I agree. No, yeah, one, and you're, you're right on. You really are. And yeah. um, let's go to John uh, in California. John, welcome to Clean Radio. Hi, John. Yes, hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, pretty good. What brings you to Clean Radio tonight, John? Well, I've been having all these problems lately um, with mainly just heroin, you know. So it's kind of hard. I do uh, a bunch of baggies a day. But um, I always have this one serious problem. Hmm. Um, what's the, what's, embarrassed. what's, what's the, the Don't be embarrassed. We've all been through it in the studio, John. I don't know. This is quite embarrassing. Um, okay. Well, every time I'm really high on heroin, it's really hard for me to get a boner, you know? And thank you for the call, John. (laughs) You know, I'm honored. We have a crank call. I hope uh, it got screened. (laughs) That means we're doing something right. Yeah. I was was so waiting for that. Uh And... um, Welcome to Clean Radio. Uh, <laughs> You're red. That's Clean so with a K. I, uh, you know, I barbecued before, so I'm a little red. Uh, anyways, let's go back to uh, let's go back to Michael. <laughs> Michael, sure. um, it started out with pot. Mm-hmm, yeah. And um, how long were you smoking? What? I was. I started smoking pot when I was about 16, and uh, when I turned 17, I I started selling weed. And I was telling you before we went on air that I kind of use drugs to kind of get out of myself, you know right. what I mean? And I started s- selling a lot of weed in town. Like, I was a pretty pretty big drug dealer selling to weed to, like, almost everyone in town who's, who had smoked. And that kind of, like, gave me an identity, you know what I mean? Auto- automatically made me cooler than you, you know what I mean? Gave me something to do through the day that I thought was, like, badass and cool, right. you know? So... That kind of gave me the attitude, like, it made me lose all fear of drugs, and it was like, drugs are great. Drugs will lead you to a rewarding life, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's kind of the misconception that I had with drugs early on. Well, the you know? delusion that comes in yeah, with it. Yeah, uh-huh, exactly. By the way, if you just tuned in and you're listening to Clean Radio Live, that's Clean with a K. The number here is 888-539-2980. That's 888-539-2980. Uh, I know a lot of people are tweeting Jennifer right now with tons of questions <laughs> because she's tweeting back <laughs> so give us a call with your questions and uh talk to michael because he's actually a really interesting good kid a uh, good young man as i should say <laughs> but one of the things you, you're talking about that's really interesting to me is it's you know you wanted to be somebody who you weren't mm-hmm. you know my dream growing up in brooklyn i always wanted to be the man right right i wanted to walk down the streets of brooklyn and somebody say somebody needs somebody and say go to judah mm-hmm. he's the man and it sounds very similar, like you weren't happy with who you exactly, were. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I thought I had found that, you know what I mean? So. But what's amazing is you played baseball, mm-hmm. you did well in school, you did all these great things, and you were still something was yep. missing. But mm-hmm. he also was in Taekwondo, and that, that was a big yeah. thing you know, for him, and, and he... Mm-hmm. And, but that also kind of made me feel a little bit different, you know what I mean? Because with already this, these feelings going on inside me, nobody else did Taekwondo, you know what I mean? I would try to hide it did from people. Did you do that to be better? Do what to be better. Did you take Taekwondo as an other it was, separation? It was from... just something that I did. I think my mom had me go when I was four, and I just excelled in it. So okay. I stayed with it like my whole life. And then when I when I kind of was growing up a little bit, like sixth, seventh, eighth grade, like going out to the movies was kind of important. And like not a lot of people did that, you know. And I was in Catholic school too, so automatically I felt different from the kids in public school that I was trying to please. You know right. what I mean? No, I trust me. I get it. I was mm-hmm. in private Jewish school. Yeah. I get it. You know, I, as you're talking about all this stuff, I'm looking at you, and it's like you're so beautiful. You really are. You're so <laughs> handsome. And um, when we were driving over here, uh, I was like, "So you're are you're not dating, right?" Like I didn't even say like, "Are you <laughs> dating, honey?" Or what's going? On? He's like, "Nah, I'm working on my sobriety and this and that." And and like we were talking about before they left the show, we were talking. I was saying, you know, a lot of things are going to happen during the show, and then things aren't going to happen. And like I was just thinking, as we've been talking through the months, that like you have constantly, you've never made it about the show. Like mm-hmm. you've always made it about like your recovery right. and like and groups and about. this and and all that stuff and like you're not getting sidetracked right now like mm-hmm. how do you stay so focused being a 21 year old hot guy that's nearly sober and like not you know wanting to be like oh i gotta get that job or i, I was mm-hmm. on tv or i need to get that, that girl like mm-hmm. that like how do you 
create your new memory, your own memories. And how do you how do you stay focused? How do you keep your eye on the prize? I think because it was so bad for me. Like I went through a lot while I was getting high. Like I've seen friends die. I've been to jail. You know what I mean? A lot. But like when I what really brought me to my knees, I wasn't in jail. I didn't really have too many legal problems going on. I was in probation. You know what I mean? I had sufficient money to keep my addiction going. And the thing that brought me to my knees was like, I would go score, shoot up, and I would I would like be okay, I'd be like, all right, finally, I feel normal. You know what I mean? I'm not sick. I have my brain back somewhat. But then to think like, oh my God, what I had to do to just feel like a normal person again? Like there, there the last six months, there wasn't one time I didn't I didn't shoot up without crying. You know what I mean? Like I, I couldn't believe what my life had come to. You know what I mean? And like I still remember that. You know very strongly. You know and. The show, it wasn't about a TV show, you know what I mean, at all. It was treatment, you know. Yeah, it was, it, it, right. yeah, absolutely. You know, I was so grateful yeah. for the experience, and I took it head on because I realized where my life was going, you know what I mean? It was already in a place that I had no idea, like, I would never thought I'd be there, you know what I mean? And, like, I almost still can't even comprehend, like, how I got there, you know what I mean? But, like, especially after the other day with my friend, like, I have a seat in AA, you know what I mean? I'm sober today and I have the tools. Like, I'm going to hold on to that, you know what I mean? Because my friend, my buddy, he never got the opportunity to go, you know what I mean? And look where he is right now. And that doesn't have to happen, you know? It, it, it just doesn't have to happen. So, like, I see the gifts of this program, you know what I mean? I'm getting so much back already that it just, it doesn't seem worth it to me, you know what I mean? Like, it's been all going so great, you know what I mean? So it just, like... This is this. It kind of is my life now. You and you're know taking I mean? the train. I gotta tell you something. <laughs> no. that, it's a huge symbol for me that somebody in Los Angeles is willing to get on right. a train. Who's not from here right, to come not from here. here. I gotta tell you, if that's if getting on a train in Los Angeles isn't willingness, I don't know what is. <laughs> Let me tell you, he was yeah. talking about taking the bus. He's like, I'm gonna look at my app and see what bus I could take. You know, I'll I'll get there. And I'm like, I can pick you up once you get into LA. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, just to even think. You know, Jenny Ketchum did that. She's from Real uh-huh, Celebrity yeah, Heaven. Yeah. She got rid of her car, her Mercedes, because she made it off of porn money and took the bus everywhere and, like, wrote, you know, a book now and all this stuff. And she's still sober and doing so well. And it's people like that that go to any lengths, mm-hmm. you know? Any lengths. Right. And if you just tuned in, you're listening to Clean Radio. That's Clean with a K. The number here is 888-539-2980. That's 888-539-2980. Uh, we're in the studio tonight with... Uh, uh, Jennifer, Jennifer nice easy on the eyes. He meant us. I was trying to come up with one of my funny things, like Cholo's gone wild. <laughs> yeah. You know, the star of like you know <laughs> Spring Break, Mexico, 1999. Argentina, but that's okay. Argentina, close enough. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, and uh, Michael Mariano, I'm so glad I'm able to say your name correctly. Let's go to Patrick because everybody asks about Patrick. Oh, Patrick. Patrick from Austin, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Hi, Patrick. So Patrick, uh, our producer, not you, Patrick. Patrick's actually counting your days. Mm-hmm. I if, asked about you before yeah, the show. Jen did ask about you. You're 40 de- 43 days sober. Nice. And uh, you said you might, last week Patrick called in, and he was having a rough Sunday. And he uh-huh. said that he actually might check out a meeting this week. How did that go? Right. Well, I didn't get to make it to the meeting. We had left out of town a little earlier than we expected to. And we were really caught up with the family thing. But tomorrow night, I got a buddy picking me up for the Monday meeting. That's amazing. That's great. And just to Patrick, uh, we have Mike in the show from uh, Rehab. It sounds, you know, you've also experienced the heroin and all that stuff. Yes, I have many times. And what happened? Um, ended up on the streets, jail, homeless, eating out of dumpsters, lost friends, lost family. My mom, my uncle, you know. And then you got sober. Mm-hmm. You were going to meetings and stuff. Right. And Real then you had a bit of a slipper. Hmm? What that? Sorry, say that again. What happened? It was about two years, yeah. And then what happened? I quit doing what works. I just tried to do it my way because it looked a little more exciting. And uh, I went out and did more research. Okay, what? When, when, let's. I want to hear that. What? What sounded more exciting? <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess it was um, the whole routine thing got to me, and I guess I wasn't. I lost. I didn't have any more goals. I guess. Right. I thought I had uh, outgrew the twelve steps. Hmm. And I, I guess uh, my ego got a little, little big, 
And, uh, Did you outgrow yeah. it, or is it like sometimes when I haven't gone to a meeting in a little bit, I'm like, oh god, I have to get back into that. Like it seems so hard or so much work to even try to jump back in. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Does that happen? Did that happen to you at all? Um, this last time, mm -hmm. it was um, yeah, it was it was a lot of ego too. You know, it was a lot of uh, shame and guilt. My pride was getting in the way; it wouldn't wouldn't really allow me to go back. Right. Yes. And do you think that's what's been preventing you from going back now? Which I'm, I'm so great. I'm so happy that you're going tomorrow night. I know. You know, I think, I think it has to do with a, a little bit. Um, yeah, but at the same time, there's other things. Like I'm in a extremely small town, and it's literally the same handful of people, and a lot of them are very negative. Right. And so, I mean, if, if I had a car right now, I would go out of town. But unfortunately, I don't have my license because of drugs and alcohol but um i mean i'd be more than happy to go to an outside meeting out of this town it's just really the negativity with um, <clears throat> the select few people is kind of counterproductive in, in my opinion let me ask you a question but, you know, how how far patrick how far is the next town <laughs> 25 miles Okay, you you know, I mean, where this is, let's try to figure out a way. I know your friend is picking you up tomorrow night to go to a meeting, but it shouldn't be that hard. You, let's figure out a way. Well, once you, you get to a meeting, you can ask people right. tomorrow night to, like, maybe you can yeah. raise your hand for help yeah. for getting a ride there. Sounds very footloosey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to figure out a way. So tomorrow night, Patrick, you're going to go to this meeting, and let's figure out a way to get you out of the town you're calling from and go to a meeting on the other side right and, yeah it's good to hear from you I, mean, yeah. I can't believe that you called in seven weeks ago and yeah. that now you're like you're really doing the deed you know and 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 i just i'm like in awe and patrick it's really amazing i gotta say so many people ask me on mondays how you doing beforehand um let's stay in touch okay i'll talk to you next week okay yeah bye patrick. okay perfect patrick Hang on, patrick if you just right. tuned in, you're listening to Clean Radio. That's Clean with a K. Uh, we're in the studio tonight with Jennifer, Easy on the Eyes, Jimenez, and Mikey. Okay, you're Easy on the Eyes, too. I know. Uh, He's so Easy Mariano, on the Eyes. Mariano, oh, who God. Jen Jimenez apparently has a crush on you. No, I, do, mm. I, can't, no, I can't. But we got to go to a break. We'll be back in uh, 30 seconds. His I mom is watching them. the show. It's a family love you, show. Mom. I love you, Mama. The discussion continues at cleanradio.com. Are you struggling with an addiction that's ruining your life? Want to have a confidential conversation with a professional that will immediately assist you? Do you suspect a loved one is abusing drugs and would like a free drug testing kit and consultation? Clean Treatment Center is standing by right now to help those with addictions and the people who care about them. Call 888-601-6040. That's 888-601-6040. Or go to Clean Treatment Center. That's clean with a K. CleanTreatmentCenter.com. Welcome back to Clean Radio. Good try, well, Jennifer. Easy I was on the gonna Aussie do Manus. it. I was gonna try to do you it. Know, Yuda, listen, I don't have a crush on on Mikey. I love him. <laughs> and it would be okay if you did because he's a, it's a awesome kid. Crush. But let's welcome yeah. back everybody out there listening to Clean Radio. We're in the studio tonight with uh, Michael Mar Mariano. <laughs> I can't say Mikey. Think That's, of the closer. Yeah. Mariano. No, I, I knew writer Mariano. Mm -hmm. But the Mikey thing, you know, the life commercials yeah, yeah. when I was a kid, and um, that's so funny that you say that. Yeah. Did, did that affect you at all? <laughs> I actually didn't know. And then when I was on the show, everybody was like, Mikey likes it. Mikey likes it. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you guys talking about? And they're like, oh, the life commercial. Yeah, it's like I he still really likes it. it. And yeah. then that's how he mm -hmm. really likes yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, And <laughs> let's <laughs> welcome back. The number is 888-539-2980. That's 888-539-2980. We're having an amazing discussion tonight. Uh, what, Mikey, Mikey just got sober on the show <laughs> Rehab, and he's still awesomely, amazingly sober. How many months Thank has you. it been? Four months. Four months, and mm -hmm. um, you're in sober living right now. I'm just more impressed that you took a train here tonight. <laughs> I know. It's yeah. so cute. Do you, how, how much does a train in Los Angeles cost? Uh, it's like $1.50. Oh, okay. You have like a tap card, and you tap it. And... But you could just get on the train, yeah, right? Yeah, you can. It's, you really can. A, a, it's really like a trust system yeah, out here. Yeah, and I break the trust a lot, yeah. but... On the way here, I did pay. Okay, we that's... should we should take a train and talk yeah, let's about it. let's do it and ask the commoners. No, I, <laughs> I, 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 oh my god, no. Let me seriously. tell you, for two years out here, oh no, I don't want to say two years. For about six months out here, I took the bus. Wait, you, I you were just recently a couple of years ago taking a scooter to yeah, work, right? I, I rode around the scooter around <laughs> town. I had a zebra scooter that was <laughs> hey. 
Hey, whatever got whatever me. Whatever got yeah. you there, right? Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I drove a scooter around, and it, there were days where it would get so windy out here <laughs> that literally I wasn't going forward. <laughs> I was going from Just side to side. And But you have to do what you have to do. Exactly. And uh, those are always the people. But let's get to a phone call. We have uh, Kyle on Hi, line Kyle. three calling from New Jersey. Welcome to Clean Radio, Kyle. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? How are you, Kyle? Good. Hey, I went to uh, I went to uh, Catholic school with Mike. I just want to let him know. Kyle, you know who I am, right, Mike? Kyle Kramer? Yes, sir. Hey, what's going hey, on, well, bud? You know, dude, I've watched you through Dr. Drew and everything, and honestly, I'm real proud of you, man. Aww. Thank you, man. You. I can't I can't tell you how much it means that you, that you called and, in. You know what I mean? Dude, I've, I've listened to you throughout the whole thing, and, you know, it happens to people. I feel sorry for you, man. I'm so happy mm-hmm. you're on the right track and everything. Right, and, right. You know, so, Kyle, I, let me I ask really you a question. People, Kyle. How did so obviously you, you you weren't affected by drugs at all? What's up? You weren't affected by drugs or I've alcohol. I've never done any drugs or anything, uh, but you know I feel sorry for people who have done it yeah. and I understand mm-hmm. it's an addiction and you know. How did you stay away from it? You know I, ne- I was never in that group of people who did any drugs or anything. I was never you know around that type of people or anything. And that was kind of the group that I did like had so much desire to be in with. Right. You know what I mean? That's the amazing thing. Yeah. It's just it's just two different perspectives, you know what I mean? And it's crazy. You know, I wish I took Kyle's route, but that's not my story, you know what I mean? And you guys don't talk, right? Like I mean, no, not really. I haven't seen him much since high school. I talked to him since sixth grade. <laughs> I'm yeah. in Mike. Oh, right. this is so oh, cool. That's, that's, that's so that's really awesome. Great, like, mm-hmm. especially you not having an addiction, a problem with addiction, like supporting him through his journey is right. so beautiful. I support him 100. percent And yeah, I want to talk amazing. about something really cool that actually you just brought up, Mike. Is that, you know, when I was drinking out there, and I've spoken about this on the show. I was in, I was in Arizona. I was uh, by Arizona State University, uh, not really in it, but mm-hmm. by it. And um, I would pass this <laughs> a place called the Coffee Plantation on Saturday nights, and I would see these beautiful young people inside. Mm-hmm. And all I wanted to do was be sitting with them. Right, I would right. wave. And you know, I, if I would have waved, I probably would have gotten arrested. <laughs> but um, all I wanted to do, and, and I, I had the problem was I had alcoholism. Mm-hmm. And when you have alcoholism, when you have addiction, you can't get to the other side of the glass. Right. And it's so it's amazing. And you're you're on the other side of the glass mm-hmm. now. It's and crazy. with sobriety, you've made it back. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe you and Kyle one day could hang out. Yeah, it would be great. I mean, I'm coming home tomorrow under unfortunate circumstances, but I, w- I would love to see him. You know, I'd love to see you, Kyle. Is he still? Yeah, Kyle, are you still there? Yeah, absolutely. How does that sound? Yeah, absolutely, man. I would like to look up to you. I'll, I'll, I'll hit you up on Facebook. All right, yes, yeah, sure. Send That's me a so message. That's so cool. Thanks yeah. so much for listening yeah, and I for appreciate supporting it, him and Thank loving him. Thank you so him. much, man. And you know what's great? That, Kyle, thanks for the call. You know what's great about listening to Kyle is that, you know, you were talking about the 15 people, your 15 friends that have mm-hmm. died from heroin. There's also hope that there are some good, you know, that there are right. kids that aren't getting. Mm-hmm. But I want to talk about something. Were you happy before you picked up drugs? Was I happy? I mean, I guess, but I was always kind of searching for something else. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Which is like sort of the opposite. I was kind of content, yeah. I guess. Right. You know what I mean? But not really content. Like I was always looking for something else. Is it hard? Was it hard for you? Like always being, I'm sure you got told this because I know on the show, like we were like, but he looks like such a good mm-hmm. kid. Like, yeah. Did, did that bother you? Like that you guys would say that? No, that like people. It wasn't just us. I mean, the perception yeah, yeah. that people have of you. For I mean, a long not time. not really. You know what I mean? Because it's like I'm almost glad that I have that kind of look about me. You know, but it's almost like don't take anything away from me. You know what I mean? I've been through a lot. Yeah. Right. You know, and like I know that, so I'm okay with that. So I mean, the I, fact that I, yeah. everyone from like the outside looking in is like, oh my God, how can it happen? You know what I mean? I mean, because like, that wasn't our thing. At least it was mm-hmm. never my thing. I mean, you come into those doors, I know that you're like, you know, right. there's some broken. dark stuff in there. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And there, and you are broken and you're just as broken as everyone else. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't like, oh, well, he's just such a good kid. It was like, he's a good kid with a lot of secrets. You know right, what I mean? Like, right. um, and, and it's interesting, you know, I mean, it. I used to get told, oh, you know, you were a pretty girl, like, because back then, you know, I was modeling and stuff, and I was mm-hmm. like, oh, if they can know that there is more, you know, and yeah. and, and I For had sure. to find that, you know what I mean? And, and it wasn't like about, oh, I'm not saying I'm pretty now, I'm just saying, like, it was something I had we're to talking break. about many years ago. Many, many, many <laughs> years ago. Um, and, uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. That's fair. Um, uh, no, but it, it's interesting seeing that, because, you know, the dynamic of... Mm-hmm. 
what you like looks can be deceiving you right, know right and what we really feel like is really the most important thing mm-hmm. mikey's mother at home is getting very nervous um <laughs> jennifer is a good woman um by the way if you just tuned in you're Stop listening it. to clean radio that's clean with a k give us a call at 888-539-2980 that's 888- 5, 3, 9, 2, 9, 80, this flirtation going on across there from is, me. It's me flirting with you, no, not him. No, I don't think so, and he's blushing now. No, let's I'm go not. to. Uh, let's don't take a, say that because okay. now everyone's going to start blogging about it. Okay. Uh, you true. know what? Can I tell you something? Of all the things in the world to blog about, this wouldn't be the worst <laughs> well, thing. Well, you right. know, some of the. Sober other guy, sober girl are dating. Oh my God. No, no, what is We're not out. dating. We're that not would, right, doing no. anything close to that. But that wouldn't that. even make. Or, that, because that's uh, such a boring story, <laughs> that wouldn't even no, because. No, I just. Because we work together. I right. mean, it'd be like me and you getting together. Yes. But you know what? Um, let's go to let's go to Rick S. <laughs> calling from uh, Rick. Welcome to Clean Radio. Hi. Hi, uh, Rick. Yeah, this is Rick, and um, I, I've never listened to Clean Radio before. Been clean and sober a long time, and um, I'm sitting here driving. I just finished driving and a bit conflicted. Um, while I can see that, I mean, it's an interesting program. I'm getting a lot out of it. Um, I wonder about um, anonymity and uh, how you guys reconcile what you're doing. Um, clearly members of 12-step programs, but not maintaining anonymity at the level of press, radio, and films. And I was just interested in how you've... Um, uh, how you reconcile that, Rick? Ob- you know, it's it's a great question, and this is the way I look at it. Before I t- got sober, and I was 22, people used to see me urinating on the street, um, and I mean that. I'm not joking around. I was homeless. I was all these things. The last worry of mine is that people see me being a sober person. I don't speak for Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't speak for any of the 12 right. steps groups. All I could do is speak for myself. And the, when, when the 12 steps were started, they used to give out their last names. It was the only way people could find them in the phone book. So I don't have really a problem. That's me because I don't speak for any of these organizations breaking my anonymity. Mm-hmm. Or breaking the traditions. Or breaking the traditions. I'm not speaking for you know any mm-hmm. of those places. I'm not sure if that helps. I think it's a great question, and I've, you know, I've asked there's, people. Yeah, I think there's two levels of the tradition, though. There's yeah. the level that's clearly... Um, you know, a spokesperson for AA or NA, and then there's the, um, you know, spiritual foundation, which is really the humility that comes with uh, maintaining anonymity. Um, and clearly, I mean, I, I agree, it's not, it's not blatant, but, you know, sitting here, I can tell um, you guys are members of, of um, the programs, uh, you know, talking about meetings and those kinds of things. And you, you answered my question. Yeah. You but Rick, I mean, it, Rick, here's the, here's the thing, right? How is somebody supposed to get help sometimes if, a, if something is so anonymous? You know, Mike, who's from Morristown, New Jersey, which isn't the mecca right. of America, um, literally it's a little town in between mm-hmm. Manhattan and Atlantic City. Mm-hmm. You know, 15 kids this th- died of his friends. That's just yep. the people we know of heroin overdoses exactly. this year. If that means that some of us break our anonymity so 15 more don't have to die next mm-hmm. year, I, I I think that's sort of, I could be wrong, but I think that could that benefit could outweigh the con. Yeah, no, right. I, and I agree with you. Yeah. I think that, like, I get to, and you know, and, and I get to carry, you know, practice these principles in all my affairs right. and I get to carry recovery and not be uh, you know the flag of any organization you know right. and just be an example and I feel like you know I'm human and I make a lot of mistakes and I do it publicly right. and it's been my choice to do it but Rick does that did that help answer your yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and I hope no, I was just curious you know I it's a great question mm-hmm. Rick and I said I was conflicted yeah no and so am I Rick and, and before yeah. every show I do pray that whatever I say doesn't you know is something okay because it's not the easiest answer in the world what you're asking it's not no no it isn't and Um, but one thing i know is that if it wasn't for you know celebrity rehab or any of those shows mike in the studio tonight wouldn't be here no Mm -hmm. i would not or the so, thousands of emails yeah. that I get from people asking for help and that they actually are getting something yeah. or want something that we all get to have. And, you know, the biggest reason we've done the show is so there is dialogue, Rick. And I really do appreciate mm-hmm. that question. Yeah. I, I mean that. I do, too. Mm-hmm. And if you could give us a call back at any time, Rick, you're always welcome to. 
Okay. Thanks, well, Rick. Nice, that was nice awesome. Nice talking to you guys. Nice talking to you, Rick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have a great night. And if you just tuned in, you're listening to Clean Radio Live. That's Clean with a K. The number here is 888-539-2980. 888-539-2980. This show takes a lot of people. And I, I, I sometimes, Jen, because we go, we, this hour goes so fast. Yeah. I just want to thank some people. I want to thank our producer, Rand. I want to thank Patrick. Um, mm-hmm. Not so easy on the eyes, Kennedy. Oh, he's no, so I'm cute. joking. He's the cutest. Uh, he's I great, would yes. go out with, with him. Everybody says they would yeah. go out with him. And uh, I want to thank Jesse, who's behind yeah, the boards, who's doing amazing. an amazing job. I make him tell me after each show how well we did. I know. It's so sweet. And, like, you know, and then there's, you yeah. know, there's a couple other people yeah. that aren't here tonight. But, like, everyone's downstairs. It's like a family yeah. environment. I feel so connected. Like, we have our it's own It's great. World. It's a lot of fun. And um, sitting in the studio tonight with us, we have Mike Mariano. Um from uh, who's after rehab. And that's mm-hmm. a sort of like what you're talking about right now, life after rehab. Right. You're 21 years old. You got four months sober. Mm-hmm. Um, the beginning was pot mm-hmm. and it ended with heroin. Yes, correct. Um, you know, and the reason I'm saying that is because I, let's take away that, uh, you know, pot is the gateway drug and it still is, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, let's be real. Pot's the, it's, for, you know, the thing is, it's not your parents' pot. And I don't think a lot of parents mm-hmm. out there, probably, you know, your friends' parents, that when you first started smoking pot, they were like, oh, kids just do it. That's what teenagers right, right. do. It's 40% more potent mm-hmm. than it used to be. Yeah, it's crazy today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah. it's it's as addictive as any other drug because they're growing it. I don't know how they're growing it, but right. they're doing something amazing, you know, mm-hmm. something crazy to it. And, that, that, and that's where it ended up. So... Mm-hmm. You never know what you're buying these days on no, the street, you, and that's the scary no, yeah. thing. It's true. I mean, it's not your parents' pot. It's, yeah. So what? what's your plans now? You're in the sober living. You're just taking it essentially one day at a time? Yeah, kind of just taking it one day at a time, being an active member of, of AA, you know, and kind of what's different this time is I'm kind of just like, I wouldn't say just letting life happen, but the things that do happen in my life, I'm I'm getting through them without drinking or picking up. You know what I mean? Like and there's a lot of stuff that's happened and it hasn't been easy. But like I know today and every day I know it more and more that picking up and using or drinking wouldn't solve anything. It would just compound my problems. You know what I mean? So you so you were talking about I mean, I I know your mom is listening tonight. Mm-hmm. Um it's great that she's adept with a computer that she can. And, yeah, my um, mom doesn't even know how to yeah, turn she's good one with on. The computer. Yeah, well, remember he's he's his mom's probably maybe forty two, and mm-hmm. um, I'm being nice because she's listening to the show tonight. <laughs> so I went with the you know so she had him when she was twenty. He's like no thirty eight. Yeah, um, <laughs> um, but so that's a whole other generation. But you know, one of the biggest things I you know the amends when we talk about making amends to Jeez. families and to. You know, one of the biggest amends I've made was that I allowed my mom to finally be able to sleep at night. Right. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. It's so funny that you just said that because, like, she would always tell me, like, I don't get any sleep. You know what I mean? Even when you're in the house, she would come downstairs and check on me two or three times a night just to make sure I'm still breathing. You know what I mean? And that's, I think, one of the biggest gifts that I can give my mom today. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She can be able to lay her head on the pillow and not worry about, is Mikey alive? How is Mikey doing? You know what I mean? Because I call her every day. You know what I mean? She's a lot less codependent with me. Yeah, she is. She, she really we, her is. Her and I talk. You yeah, know that, like right? my birthday was a couple months ago. I didn't get one penny. You know what I mean? For Not from oh, wow. her, not from any of my other relatives. And like it's because she's going to Al-Anon. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm really proud of everything that I she's really doing. I really want to talk about that because I, I'm falling in love with your mom. Um, mm-hmm. in, yeah, in, she's, in, 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 she's an amazing woman. In what woman. she's she actually really doing. And this is a really true story. I, I joke about this a lot, but this is the God's honest truth. Al-Anon is one of the greatest programs out there. For family members, I beg of you, everybody out there that has a, a, a member of a, a family, friend, go to Al-Anon. Anyone mm-hmm. you know. Because I used to tell my parents that it cost $10 to go to <laughs> AA meetings. Oh, God. And thank God they found Al-Anon mm-hmm. because they didn't believe me this time that AA <laughs> yeah. meetings, they knew it was free. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, and that saved my life. Had I had $10 each meeting, I probably wouldn't have stayed sober. So yeah. Al-Anon, definitely. Let's go to line one. We got uh, Pete. Welcome to Clean Radio, Pete. Yeah, I thought it was Billy. Well, thank you. You guys have a great show. I've been enjoying listening to it, driving home. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I was telling your screener, I, uh, I'm i just celebrating 30 years of sobriety. Wow, congratulations. That's amazing. I Happy want what birthday. you have. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, you know, but it's great to hear the show because it uh, immediately draws me right back to where I come from, you know, mm. and it was a lot of one day at a time, one hour at a time, uh, you know, and, and, and it evolved, and I evolved in the process, you know. Where are you calling right. from, Pete? Are you calling from Los in, Angeles? In in Los Angeles, yeah. in the LA, LA area. I'm sorry. 
That's okay. Uh, um, but what I what I wanted to share with you, I have a, a relative of mine that's uh, involved with the uh, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. An amazing organization. Yeah, and and I uh, when I got my first uh, DUI, they hadn't really, uh, you know, put themselves together to get the legislation that they did. And I got more or less slapped on the hand, and it really didn't do me much good at all. But uh, thanks to those guys or those women that took their anger and did something constructive with it, you know, their rage, their hurt, all that emotion, and got legislation, they got a drunk like me into a program, you know. And and I actually had the uh, the pleasure of telling him of my kind of appreciation of that because I came to realize what they did for me, you know. I'm sure they were doing it for themselves at the time, but but they did it for me, you know. And that's the, and that's and you you were able to get sober after that moment. Oh sure, you know, like I said, it was it was a process, but it still is, you know. But but I I don't think I don't think it would have happened. I don't think you know they would have reached me had they not got the legislation that really came down hard on me. I I found myself shackled in front of a judge that was telling me to take a good look around at the the jail system, because the next time I wound up there, I was going to be up there for a long time. You so know? you actually really did get scared straight. Yes, yes, I did. I can still see his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, how how old were you when you got sober, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, 34. So obviously right now you're 64. You don't sound right. a day later. I know. Um, I'm remarried. I have a beautiful daughter. Two daughters, actually. One from previous marriage and now this one. But, uh, you know, not only get a... Uh, a chance at a rebirth at life, but a, you know, a marriage and a family as well. So. so one of the things we were talking about in the beginning of the show was, uh, you know, creating these new memories. And obviously you've had 30 years of just the most amazing memories. Uh, how was yeah, well, your first, how was your first year sober? Your first holidays? You know, it's funny, but, um, I, I really clung to the program. I, I had the realization that I needed AA, you know, mm-hmm. I needed the fellowship. When it, when I finally admitted to myself that I are one, I wanted to find out what it was and how to and how to live. You know, I used to judge places that I went by how many beers it was going to take me to get there. You know, so um, for me it was a, a new family. You know, and I really leaned on them and I tried to sort out the people that were walking the walk not just talking the talk you well, know? something I want to talk about that you're bringing up and, and this obviously is going to go to Mike and this goes to everybody out there where are you from originally you from Brooklyn Sounds no, like Massachusetts. Mm, okay. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. I still love you, man. Um, but uh, you know, it, you're from Massachusetts. Where he's from Jersey. I'm from New York. That that thought. I'm from of, Argentina. You're from Argentina, <laughs> but there's something like you know we're raised, and maybe it's just this country to like say, oh my god, I need to rely on this. Mm-hmm. But it's almost be made us all better men, better humans. And women. And women. And better, and better, <laughs> of course, and better everybody. But was that hard? Was that hard, like, submitting to, you know, to a 12-step program? I, I have to admit that in the, in the first year, I don't know that I really even submitted to the 12-step until after the first year. Hmm. For, me, for me, in the beginning, it, was, it really was a day-to-day thing. I mm-hmm. knew that left to my own devices, I would, I would fail. Right. Yep. Sort of like, like what that. Mike has been right. talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I did I did meetings. If I wasn't working, I, I lived near the beach, and I would go to these meetings down in Sunset Beach, and people that know California or Southern Cal would know this place. But um, I would head there morning, noon, and night, mm-hmm. you know, and, I, and, I, and I would hang out with the people afterwards, the yeah. coffee shop, what have you. And I, and, and I even I wound up moving. I separated myself from my drinking friends. Yep, that's what I did. Um, and, and, and then I took up new hobbies. I got into uh, scuba diving. I just knew that I had to do a complete remake, mm-hmm. you know. Right. And and it wasn't until into the pro into the meetings, I should say, not the program, but it wasn't until about a year into the meetings that I I came to realize that it wasn't me that needed to make the remake. It was my higher power that really needed to to do it. And that's where I started looking for for my solution. One of the things that Someone, someone told me, shared with me a, a zillion things in the meetings, but one of them was um, principles before personalities, you know. And, 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 and I remember sometimes some people would really aggravate me in a meeting, and I would just <laughs> drop my head and close my eyes and say, 
let me hear what I need to hear. Yeah. And, and, and invariably, I would. Maybe two or three speakers later, but I would hear it. You know, and you know what's great about that, too, is that those people that you met at meetings are just so many of the people we meet in society. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So those things just taught me how to learn how to deal with people. Um, Pete, we're running out of time. Thank you so um, much, and we'll happy call birthday. Back next week and listen again next week. We're on every Sunday night from 8 to 9. Yeah, sure will. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Thank Thanks, you very Pete. much. Happy 30 years. Wow, God they're the heart and soul of yeah. this program. Have right. a great night. And if you just tuned in, you're listening to Clean Radio Live. That's Clean with a K. The number here is 888-539-2980. That's 888-539-2980. We're having problems with the phones tonight. It, it appears that way. But we're in the studio tonight with Jennifer, Easy on the Eyes, Jimenez, and Mike Mariano from... Uh, from rehab, who just got done with the show Rehab and Manage. You know, you know, has a whole new life ahead of him. You know, what's amazing is so many people, you know, get opportunities and don't take advantage of mm-hmm. them. You chose, you got on this show and you decided, I'm going to run with it. Right. And I am going to, mm-hmm. I am going to seize, seize this opportunity. Mm-hmm. And how many people have we seen that have done this, that have done, you know, celebrity rehabs and all these other things that haven't? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what is held, what is, what has kept you right now? What, I want to know what you're doing. What what has kind of kept me? Like, I wanted to get into treatment a long time before the show really happened. So it was really like a God shot. I didn't have any other opportunity. So when it kind of like came through, it was like, this is the one shot I have at this or else I'm going to die down the road. You know what I mean? Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not the next day. But you know what I mean? I see where my life is going. Right. And it's going to end nowhere good. So like... From the day that I got on the show, you know what I mean? Like, I knew I was going to have a nasty withdrawal. I knew He had a was, horrible withdrawal, just, the worst. Yeah, you, you know, it was, it was absolutely horrible. And, but, like, I knew that I just had to dive into this thing, like, completely. You know what I mean? And that's what I, that's what I do today. Like, there's not really any part of my day that's not about my recovery. You know what I mean? I wake up, I pray, I make my bed. I ask, what can I do for someone else instead of me? You know what I mean? Cause, and you follow direction well. Yeah, I mean, and, from what you've exp- and, uh, told me and... Uh-huh. Sober living and stuff like that too. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of lo- just there's a lot of kind of stuff that I kind of just had to like throw away my will and say, okay, let me do this. But I think that's what Pete was talking about a lot. You know what I mean? Just like being compliant in sobriety. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Before you actually really kind of like surrender and make a realization that like this thing's really going to take your life. I mean, maybe that's kind of what I'm in. You know what I mean? Just complying to whatever someone tells me, following direction, and then before I know it, you know what I mean? It'll I'll have more clarity on it. But, like, I know this can take my life. So I'm kind of just, like, sitting down, shutting up, and doing this. You know what I mean? Because I know that with left to my own devices and using my own brain, I'll be right back to where I was. I have to tell you, I was your age that you are now when Mm -hmm. I first walked into the rooms of a 12-stop meeting. And I wish I got it. I I, Mm -hmm. I swear, I wish I got it. I would have ruled my own universe. Yes, my story would have been different. But if anything, just keep doing what you're doing seriously. Mm -hmm. Like, what you're doing is working. Right. What are you, you know, sadly, you have to go back uh, to, mm-hmm. you know, the East Coast tomorrow. Right. You lost a friend to, mm-hmm. you know, heroin addiction. What is your, you know, do you have a, you know, do you have a schedule as you go back there? Um, I'm not as concerned as I was going back the last time. The last time I only had like a month sober. Yeah. And it's, it's it, it, scary. Was, it was just completely overwhelming. I was yeah. just petrified. But this time, you know, I, I hope that I, I didn't want it to be like this. I knew I was going to be going back around Christmas. But, I mean, I'm going to be at the kids' service, you know what I mean? And I just want to be there to help anyone that I can. Because there's still a lot of friends going through this back home that I just want to, like, talk to. If if I can get through to them, if I can't, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm not expecting to. You know, nobody could have shaken me and be like, can't you just get sober? And I don't plan on that. But just to kind of make myself feel good about it, I just... I want to talk to them and be like, please, like, you don't understand, like, what a great life you can have. You know what I mean? And, like... Some people, they just don't, they don't see that because I remember when I was in it, uh, there was no other way out. You know what I mean? Not necessarily that I wanted to die or that John wanted to die, but when you're in it like that, you don't see any other way out. You know what I mean? Like, how am I going to stop this? How am I going to get out of this vicious cycle? You know, or maybe when I die, you know, that's the only, that's when it'll be over, you know? And I liked what you said. There was nothing anybody could have said to you. Right. So almost as you going back tomorrow, you know, they say it's a program of attraction, not promotion. Yes, yes. You're not going to have to promote this to anybody. Mm-hmm. The people that are going to be there are going to either see this amazing life that in mm-hmm. this journey that you've started and go, I want that. Right, right. They're going to see something different. Mm-hmm. And, no, yeah. and I think that's the amazing thing about the sobriety game, mm-hmm. the sobriety thing is that 
you know, I mean, you're proof that it's working. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. one day at a time. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. yeah. You get to see things differently, too. Oh, absolutely. You get to see through clearer eyes, and mm -hmm. it changes constantly. It really does. And, like... I'm definitely not as concerned this time. Like, I wanted to go home. I talked to my mom the morning that she told me the news and everything, and I was like, listen, I need to come home. Like, I need to do this. And last night, I went to a meeting, and I was so glad that I did. You know what I mean? And I kind of broke down right in the meeting because I was just, like, kind of picturing, like, this is my, my friend could have been here with me, and, like, he wouldn't have been taken. You know what I mean? And what I did... I got up and I got a welcome chip and I'm going to give it to like put it on his coffin at the wake or something like that because he never had the opportunity to go and get one. You know what I mean? And be welcomed into this thing of ours, you know, because like I owe my life to to this program. We're you know running I mean? out of time, Mike. Um, mm -hmm. I want to thank uh, you for being an amazing guest. Yeah. I'm going to have you thank back you. on because you're amazing more than mm -hmm. anything. You're just you're a good guy. And, and easy on the eyes yeah, thank for you. you. Both of you guys. <laughs> I want to thank, yeah? Your hands are beautiful. I never noticed that. Yes, God was good with my hands. Yeah. And um, thank Apparently. you for me. Thank you for embarrassing me tonight. And um, I want to thank Jennifer. I love you. the eyes to, right back at you, kiddo. Um, I want to thank you, Mike. I want you to thank do me you. a favor. If you need anything mm -hmm. when you're in New Jersey or anything, give Jen a call. Of course. Um, <laughs> I was going to say give me a call, but you could give me a call. Mm -hmm. And I want you to call the show in next week if you can, just to okay. let us know how it went, if for you're sure. still there. For I sure. just want you to, I, I want, I, I, I want, I want he to likes keep you. you. I he do likes like him. you. He's from yeah. New York. He's got you. a Yankee hat. It. That's respect. <laughs> I just, and uh, <laughs> the discussion right. continues at cleanradio.com. Thank we'll you. Talk I love you. Hang in there, guys. Have a good night. Are you struggling with an addiction that's ruining your life? Want to have a confidential conversation with a professional that will immediately assist you? Do you suspect a loved one is abusing drugs and would like a free drug testing kit and consultation? Clean Treatment Center is standing by right now to help those with addictions and the people who care about them. Call 888-601-6040. That's 888-601-6040. Or go to Clean Treatment Center. That's clean with a K cleantreatmentcenter.com.